Welcome back to the Community Strategy Podcast. I'm Deb Shell, your host here, and I've interviewed over 100 community leaders, business owners, and facilitators who give you the backstage pass to their community strategy. I'm a creator turned community builder, and after failing my launch in 2020, I discovered I had a passion for community events, cultivating belonging, and developing a strategy for success. As the author of Creator to Community Builder, Find Calm While Building Your Online Community, I encourage you to dig deep and go beyond the surface level marketing and understand your ideal member. As a community and marketing strategist, I've helped over 70 business owners in developing and implementing a launch plan for an online community course or membership. On this podcast, I share interviews with community builders just like you who have a message, a purpose, and who want to bring a group of humans together for a purpose. You are invited to join Community Builders with Purpose to connect with like-minded people who want to learn how to run, manage, and grow a online community. The community is free, so I hope you can join. Uh, it's a new place to share your community concept, ask questions about community building, and connect with us for an intentional community development strategy. Our members join programs and special events to continue learning and growing. The community is an ecosystem, a place where you can join no matter what stage you're in, beginner, intermediate, or advanced. I hope to see you inside. Now let's get started. Hey there, and this is Deb. I'm just popping in before this episode to give you a preview of what you're about to hear. So again, I'm splitting this episode into two parts, and part one is a recording from our recent member meetup inside the the Community Builders with Purpose space. And a friend of mine, Brian, came to talk about how he's been cultivating engagement authentically in his community, Third Nature, and also during his conscious conversations that I've been lucky to participate in over the last, uh, I think, two years at this point. He has an, a global worldwide community that he's cultivated. And so he shares his, he dives into like the backstory of one of the things that a lot of people when i have clients coming to me for their to get clarity on their community concept they're like i'm asking well what's your purpose what's your why why are you doing this and brian kind of goes through the journey of how he got to this place by questioning like what i was do what he was doing in his job is and then he quit his job and um, he found another job as a ski instructor and that brought some experiences and just a lot of different things that he ended up doing to get him to where he's leading these retreats and having adult summer camp and meeting with people on a global level online every week with the conscious conversations. So he dives into a little bit of background about that. And this is what we talk about when we say, you know, what's your purpose? Because everyone has something. You have a unique story that, because nobody lived your life you, except you. <laughs> so you're the only one that can share everything valuable that you've learned. And that's the benefit of connecting in shared wisdom and community and cultivating this um, our, our authentic connections and engagement. And so a lot of people, I'll say, <laughs> that, that might be if you're listening and you're thinking oh I really need to improve my engagement in my community listen to this episode because you're going to be surprised at some of the tips that we talk about and ideas and strategies that Brian has brought to the table so uh, ex enjoy the episode I can't wait for to hear how you what you think about it uh, if you're not a member of the Community Builders with Purpose space, uh, grab the link either on the show notes or on the findcalmhere.com website and connect with us. Every month I'm doing a little talk about our, the book that I wrote recently called Creator to Community Builder. So hope to see you there. Enjoy the, uh, in the episode and I'll see you soon. Welcome back to the Community Strategy Podcast. 
I am excited today because we are hosting a live conversation inside Community Builders with Purpose with Brian Heffman, and he is going to introduce us to his uh, strategies and how he works with his community third nature. So welcome, Brian, to the Community Strategy Podcast and the Community Builders with Purpose. Thanks, Deb. Thanks so much for having me. I'm excited for this conversation. I am too. So I met you, I guess it was like two years ago. I think around that time um, through a different community and uh, you host these conversations on Fridays that I just joined. I think I joined like one of your workshop sessions for like end of the year reflections. And then I think you Mm -hmm. do, you did like a new year thing. And then I started to join your conscious conversations on Fridays, which I really been enjoying. And so I got to know you through the the last two years, and I'm just so glad that we can connect here. But I want you to tell for the people in the room that don't know you uh, a little bit about um, you yourself and what brought you to start Third Nature, if you could. Yeah, thanks for the invitation. And it's been so great having you as part of the Third Nature community uh, over the last couple of years. So Third Nature is all about living with intention. So the way I like to describe third nature is first to distinguish third na- between third nature and second nature. So things that become second nature become habitual, right? Those are learned ways of being, conditioned, if you will. Whereas third nature is about being more conscious about your ability to choose how you show up in the world. Um, And that sort of way of looking at life um, and approaching life guides all of our programming. So whether that's Conscious Conversations, which you just mentioned, that's our free event that we host every week, every Friday at 12 p.m. Eastern on Zoom. Uh, the reflection workshops, you mentioned that. So we do those at the end of every quarter. So we do like reflecting on winter that's coming up in a couple of weeks, reflecting on spring, summer. And then instead of reflecting on fall, we do reflecting on the year. Um, so the end of year reflection workshop is the big one. Um, and we've done lots of virtual and in-person workshops, uh, and retreats over the years. Um, but the reflection workshop and conscious conversations are the two main virtual workshops or virtual experiences that have stuck. And then in person, I think these days we're most known for our adult summer camp weekends. So we do adult summer camp weekends in the Northeast US. Um, and that's really a place for uh, entrepreneurial minded, kind Uh, curious, good-hearted individuals to come together and connect and play. Uh, Because we believe, like Dr. Stuart Brown says, that most adults are suffering from what he calls chronic low-grade play deprivation. Uh, So Third Nature Summer Camp is a space where adults can come and kind of tap into that childlike enthusiasm for life, uh, play, while also learning, growing, and connecting with other, again, just good people in an inspiring environment. Uh, We also do custom experiences, so custom workshops and retreats for other companies and university groups. So that's kind of a rundown of what Third Nature really means and what it's all about and our programming. What brought you to this work? That was your question. Mm -hmm. Um, But that's okay. I love the background because that's helpful for everyone. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. And I think the the what, you know, for me helps, like, as I tell the story of the why, right, like how I came to this work, hopefully helps people listening pick up on things in my story that connect to, like, what we're actually doing. Um. So that's the what, now here's the why. So for me, um, it really start like, like, I mean, there, you could start your story at any point. Right. Um, and I find myself w- when I tell the story of third nature, uh, often starting back in 2012, 
when I was working a corporate job at a college, kind of entry level job, doing pretty well there. Um, but not really questioning any of that like second nature conditioning that I had been exposed to throughout my life uh, at the time. And I didn't think of concepts like essence versus conditioning or second nature versus third nature. Um, I was just kind of, you know, coasting through life and things were going pretty well. Um, but tragedy kind of woke me up as, as it often does for people. So in 2012, my dad passed away. And when he died, I really, that, that kind of forced me to take a step back and think more intentionally about my life, right? Why am I, you know, spending my, my days the way I'm spending my days? Um, again, I think death really brings into focus the uh, how finite life is and uh, completely changed my relationship with time and how I'm spending my time. And, and I started to think more intentionally, more consciously about how I really want to be spending my time, what I really want to be doing for my work, how I want to be contributing to the world and to others. Um, I didn't know really what I wanted to do. Um, but I started to just kind of follow my intuition and, uh, follow the signs, if you will. So I, after a few months, quit my job at CBS. Um, that was that first corporate entry level job, uh, which was great by the way, but just got to a point where I was like ready for the next thing. And I knew I didn't want to be there. Uh, I knew I didn't see myself like. I have to clarify. What CBS meaning the television company? Okay. That one. Yes. I was like CBS. Good question. Yeah, cuz <laughs> yeah, it's easy to confuse with CVS, yeah. not the pharmaceutical company, the 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 media brand. And you are in marketing? Uh, ad sales, okay. so kind of. Sure. Um, yeah, sales marketing. Uh and anyway, I I just didn't like when I looked at the people who were five or 10 years ahead of me in that role, I wasn't inspired, right? I didn't see myself in that, uh, in that role. So I was like, why be there for another year if I don't see myself, uh, or, or I'm, I'm not excited to like be where they are five, 10 years down the road. Um, but again, didn't really know what I wanted to do for my career, but knew that uh, this opportunity to move out to Colorado and be a ski instructor for the winter sounded really exciting. Um, Where'd you get so that opportunity? That. Was that something you searched for? So one of my best friends at the time was living in Hawaii uh, after college, and he was planning on that winter uh, being a ski instructor in Colorado. And it was either at my dad's funeral or like in the days that it was like right around my, the time of my dad's funeral when we were talking and he was telling me about his plan. And I asked him, what mountain are you going to be a ski instructor at? Where, where will you be teaching? And he said, Beaver Creek. And I was like, whoa, because that was my dad's favorite mountain. So when he said that, it was like, okay, that's cool. And, and I didn't at the time think like, I want to do that, but it, it just seemed like cool, the synchronicity in that moment. Um, but the more I thought about it and the more we talked about it, the more I thought, I don't know what I, again, I don't, I don't know what I want to do for my career, but I know that this opportunity to travel, to get out of my, you know, day-to-day -day routine, the context that I've grown accustomed to, the people in the environment that I've, I've been immersed in to temporarily like remove myself from that and place myself in this new context, new environment surrounded by new people being outdoors, um, yeah, I was going to say the the transition between New York City because you were in the city, right? 
at yeah, that point. Yeah, it was in New York City. Yeah. Yeah. So the transition from New York City to, to Colorado, quite different. <laughs> yeah. And I, I went to college in Michigan, but there, there are a lot of people from the New York area who end up going to school in Michigan. And um, I did meet a lot of people from, from around the world in college, but um, it was all people who, as is the case, I think with a lot of people when they go to college, it was all people at a similar like intelligence level, similar mm. interests, similar level of ambition. Whereas in Colorado, it was like, very different from what I was accustomed to. People who are thinking about life and work just completely differently. Um, because again, they weren't aspiring to build companies or uh, work in corporate America and climb the corporate ladder. They were very content and happy uh, making a good living as ski instructors and spending all day outside on the mountain doing what they love um and so so i was exposed to to that and also the the community that formed among ski instructors you know yeah i was going to people... jump into that because i was going to yeah. say community is really uh in the heart of a lot of these different activities especially things that are active outside and i think groups of people that are doing those things. So that's probably was your first really jump into maybe like a new community that was outside of like what you're traditionally used to. And maybe that was what inspired some of these other things later down the road. Sounds like a hundred percent, a hundred percent. And, and I, I also had, um, a couple experiences during and shortly after college, uh, before moving out to Colorado where I, was traveling with a new group of people. And the important thing here is just like, it doesn't have to be traveling to a place like Costa Rica, where we used to do our alternative spring break program or Southeast Asia, where I just was a few months ago. It, it can be just, again, getting out of your usual day-to-day -day routine and, and going to a space where you're connecting with, with new people. And it's, um, it's just, it's a context switch. Again, I think that context switch is important. And we try to cultivate this and maybe you've like felt this even in conscious conversations. Um, but I think that that context switch is important in building community. Yeah. Um, and I oh, always Can you that... guide us on what conscious conversations is since we didn't really explain that um, exactly? Yeah. Yeah. So it's a space again, every Friday, 12 to 1 PM Eastern on zoom. Anyone's welcome to attend. It's hundred percent free of charge. Um, and it's a space for meaningful connection, uh, conversation and learning from, from one another. Um, we've kind of built this global community where we're routinely joined by people from, um, you know, sometimes we have people from five continents, literally like 10 plus countries around the world in a given session, um, which is awesome because we focus on a different topic every week. So like this Friday's topic is having more fun. Last Friday's topic was learning from relationships. And we start with a brief intro from whoever the lead facilitator is followed by a guided meditation to kind of center and ground and acclimate to the space. And then we get into breakout rooms and each breakout room is facilitated. Uh, so we have three or four facilitators, usually depending on the size of the group, uh, try to keep each conversation to between uh, four and eight people. Uh, we found that that's kind of like six or seven is really the magic number for um Mm, like a, a, a really quality conversation that can go deep where everyone has an opportunity to share. I think six is ideal if you're doing it on zoom, just because like boxes are all lined up. Exactly. <laughs> whereas seven, it like adds that one box to the bottom and makes it a little like less. Are you symmetrical. a perfectionist a little bit? <laughs> a little bit, a little OCD for sure. Um, but <laughs> yeah. yeah. So then we, we, dive into a conversation on the topic for about 35, 40 minutes. 
And then the last like five to eight minutes, we come back together as one group. Each facilitator shares a few takeaways from their group's conversation. And again, it's really just a place where people can share, feel really hopefully seen, heard and understood and learn from others. Um, I always go in with like my own thoughts and perspectives on a topic and leave uh, having expanded those perspectives and and like learned a lot about um, myself, others and, and the world through those conversations. Yeah, I've thoroughly enjoyed those as well. I think it's fascinating. The conversations and how what people bring to it so differently dependent on where they're coming from in the world, the situations that they've gone through, those life challenges yeah. that you mentioned. Um, so I want to dive in a little bit more to engagement. Um, and engagement means a lot of different things to a lot of people. So I wanted to ask you, what do you think you would define engagement as for your community? So for, for me, it's connect uh, and, and kind of, I think this was like the subtitle of this session. It's authentic connections between individuals. Um, be, and, and I think it's important to think about it as connect for me as connections between individual community members because what that means is what it's not about is it's not about like like when i hear engagement i think of like engagement on my posts on like social media right like engagement in my newsletter how many opens and clicks does it get how many likes or comments does it get on linkedin or twitter or instagram and to me, that that's not what community engagement is. That's that's social media engagement. That's newsletter engagement. But community engagement um, is about how we spark authentic and meaningful connections between individuals. And can I tie this back just to kind of wrap up the story? So, and I'll, I'll fast forward um, from Colorado to like really the start of Third Nature. Um, I came back from Colorado, started another business. And again, in the interest of time, won't get into this is how it goes, though. You start one thing and then you drop and then you learn and then you learn again. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> the the best thing that came from that first business post Colorado was I built a network and I'm intentionally not calling it a community. I built a network of other entrepreneurs in New York City. And I say a network because there was nothing connecting the people that I was connected to, right? It was just a network. It was it was one to one or one to many connections. Um, but I I kept seeing this thirst for community among entrepreneurs in New York City. Um, this like me against the world mentality. And I think this is still largely the case for anyone pursuing a non-traditional path. Um, when there's no like guidebook or. Um, this was also before the COVID pandemic. Yeah. Yeah. So you we're started talking a, like a long time ago, like 2015, before. 2016. Um so yeah, the, the original idea was, it was called Startup Island and it was a retreat in Costa Rica for entrepreneurs based in New York City. That was the original idea. Let's take a bunch of entrepreneurs from New York City who are craving community, take them to Costa Rica, do a week long retreat and trust that the power of travel, again, taking people out of the context that they're used to into a new context will naturally lead to authentic connections between uh, participants. And that was in 2016, we did our first retreat. And, you know, here we are, actually, exactly eight years later, eight years ago today, we were like wrapping up that first retreat. Um, so it's been quite a journey. We've done a lot of different programs. I mentioned that alternative spring break program for college entrepreneurs. We used to do a new year's retreat, but 
Um, and now, so we rebranded to Third Nature in January 2022 to be, be, largely because this thirst for community and connection is prevalent across society. It's not specific to entrepreneurs. We just happen to start by serving entrepreneurs. Um, and we still have this like foundational focus on entrepreneurial minded individuals. And there are a lot of community builders in our community, but it's really about just what we say now, which is like empowering people to love their lives more. Um, and, and a big part of that, again, I think is feeling authentically connected to the people in your life. Mm -hmm. So specifically who you serve, it really depends on personal values more than like individual, um, attributes, like they are this kind of person or something. Exactly. There are a lot of communities that are very successful that serve like entrepreneurs or uh, solopreneurs or, um, you know, female uh, dog owners in Park Slope, Brooklyn. Right? Yeah, you go on Meetup, you can find any group that you want ever. Exactly. Like and very it's very, community. and a lot of the work I do with clients is to ask them these specific questions because there's so many groups out there that you can get lost in the mix. And so I was, that's what I was asking is how do you, how did you continue with this concept of we are serving so many people? Because it is a hard one to, to be doing that, to offering this opportunity to so many, a wide group of people. Well, we focus on the psychographic. So again, it's not about like a specific job or attribute or um, age, gender, uh, sexual orientation, political ideology. Like we want to bring together like part of, for us, an integral part of the third nature experience is the diversity of the group. Mm -hmm. But what binds people, what brings people together is this shared mindset. So we are like super specific about who it's for, but it's none of those things, right? It's, it's, it's not demographic. It's psychographic. Yeah. So it's about how they think it's about, um, and we have like a list of these kind of like, ways of being or ways of thinking on our website that people can check out. Um, and it's our hope that by sharing that people see that and they're like, oh, this is me. Yeah. But again, we're not talking about like a job, an age, a gender, like and any of these like uh, typical defining characteristics that you might find on on Meetup. Not to say that that's like a bad way of building community. It's just, you just know. Just a different, different way. Yeah. Folks, exactly. Yeah. So what was the the plan then as far as monetarily supporting yourself through this endeavor? Because as I know, and many people <laughs> in the room here today and people listening uh, are obviously like, okay, how did you make this work financially? <laughs> so it, first of all, took a long time. So what I always recommend to really any entrepreneur is don't and and again this is like it depends on the person but my mentality is don't like quit your day job and give yourself 6 months to turn your business your community into something that can support you full time build the thing while keep keep your day job and and build the community on the side until it can support you. Um, so again, like I was building a completely different business while building Startup Island. That business had been running for three years, had achieved you know some level of success. And I was building uh, Startup Island simultaneously and eventually got to a point after probably about a year um, where and when I kind of slowly started to shift my time uh, from tabs, my first business to startup Island. Um, but it probably wasn't for like two or three years 
until I was able to go full time with Startup Island. Uh, then a year or two later, COVID hit and, you know. And all uh, your stuff is really in person, a lot of it, primarily. It was, yeah, yeah, at that point. Um, but I'll say, like, you know, that that really gave us an opportunity to reinvent and roll out a lot of virtual programming, which, frankly, we never really figured out how to monetize the virtual programming. What has, to, to really answer your question, the thing that... Um, really drives our revenue is the custom experiences. So uh, designing, selling, and facilitating uh, custom workshops and retreats for other companies and universities. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of those relationships that we have with those companies and universities, uh, we've cultivated over the last eight years through like Kind of like if that's our B2B business, we've cultivated those relationships through the B2C side. You know, people come to Third Nature Summer Camp and then we'll ask, would you like to bring a Third Nature style experience to your company? Mm -hmm. We follow up with everyone who says yes. And those companies have much bigger budgets to, you know, bring in programming like that, you know, that we we like to create and, and facilitate. So um it also takes the pressure off like the B2C kind of community side of the business because um, it's hard. It's it's hard to, um, and, and this isn't just from my experience. I talk to a lot of community builders and, and I just see time and time again how much time and energy and care it takes and how difficult it is to make a living just from your your community. Not to say it's not possible. There are also a lot of people who, who've done it successfully. No, there are a lot of people that are constantly doing it successfully. But I think, again, it's it's time and it's commitment and it's understanding your unique value, which is what you kind of worked through all of those different endeavors. We're trying to figure out, like, what is it exactly that I'm wanting to cultivate here? What is it exactly that I can do with my skills and background and experience? And then you also didn't do this alone, right? You had other people that were uh, alongside of you. And I know you brought facilitators and did some facilitate facilitator training <laughs> say that three times yep. fast <laughs> so yes. yeah talk to us a little bit about your support that you've had through this yes. too thank you for joining me on this episode of the community strategy podcast if you enjoyed this episode make sure you're following or subscribe wherever you listen this helps me because I know you won't miss an episode and it helps you because you will always get the episodes right away. This podcast has produced by myself, Deb Shell, independent owner of Find Calm Here. If you really enjoyed this episode, I am looking for some Apple podcast reviews. Um, I'm going to explain to you how to do that right now. First, if you go to your Apple podcast and click on the circle with the three dots on the top right corner, then make sure you're following the show. Second, uh, next click go to show and scroll down to where it says ratings and reviews. Then right above about, you will see a little square with a pencil. Next to the square, you'll see write a review. Make sure you save the review before closing out your screen. I would love if you could do that for me. If you don't want to say anything nice, then don't say, don't leave a review. <laughs> uh, I hope that you enjoy this podcast and this season. And I hope you're finding calm in any day, even today or tomorrow, any day, moment, even afternoon. Today, Saturday at four, find calm until the next time. Take care. Bye.